Ba, ba, ba. Good morning, everybody. Sam here, United People's TV. It's Tuesday. I'm here to talk about all the latest Manchester United transfer news. You know the drill by now. You've joined me on these live streams every day, Monday to Friday, between 9.30 and 9.45, although today is 9.53. Sorry, I'm a little bit late, but my internet was not very stable. I think it's hopefully sorted now. But you know the drill by now. I'm going to run through all the latest news that's coming from around Europe. I'm going to talk about what happened yesterday at Euro 2020. Scott McTominay's performance with Scotland. Victor Lindelof's performance with Sweden and David De Gea. I'm going to talk about the latest news. Manchester United have offered Cristiano Ronaldo a two-year contract. That's what the reports from Italy are saying. We've got the latest on Rafael Varane. Sancho. Gary Neville on the Glazers. The Glazers. A little bit from Cavani. There's loads and loads to run through this morning. And I'm enjoying how many of you really are watching. And you know what you're doing now. You're all doing it before I've even asked. We've got Alan watching from Singapore. Good morning. We've got Billy watching from Australia. Good morning to you as well, my friend. We've got Ange Am 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 Joy watching from Norway. We've got Akin Yemi watching from... Where is it? Uh, there's, uh, there's too many comments coming in straight away. Eamon watching from Donegal in Ireland. And Peter watching from Zambia. Good morning to all of you. You know what to do. I mean, you're already here, so you're definitely subscribers. But let's get straight into the news before we talk any more. And let's talk about the, let's be honest, the annual stories that come out that Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be coming back to Manchester United. Basically, ever since he left and joined Real Madrid, every single summer, these stories come out. That, you, that Ronaldo is going to make a return to United. But maybe this year there, there's more credence to it. Maybe there's more of a chance. But what are the stories saying out in Italy? Manchester United have put a two-year contract off on the table for Ronaldo, according to a report from Italy. Um, he is coming into the final year of his contract at Juventus and is reportedly looking for a move this summer. And this is coming from Gazzetto della Sport, is saying that the 36-year-old is considering his options and United have already made their move, offering a two-year deal worth €20 million Euros per year which works out at roughly £330,000 a week. Do you want Ronaldo back at United? It's the first question. I've asked this quite a few times. He's 36 years old, man, but he also scored 36 goals last year. Now, 330000 a week, would make, I think that's just under what David De Gea earns at the moment, but he's on like 530, look at that, £513,000 a week at, at Juventus. And if Juventus didn't get into the Champions League this year, which they just about did, I think on the final day of the season, I think Ronaldo would definitely have been leaving uh, Juventus. Maybe because the fact that they stayed in it, they're going to keep him. But I don't know. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. There's, there's plenty of comments coming through. Alan McGregor over on YouTube. Ronaldo is still a very good player. But as we have seen with Pogba, constant media attention is not helpful to the team. And Ronaldo brings his own circus with him. I mean, I suppose that's a, that's a fair point. But Ronaldo brings the circus because Ronaldo is the circus. Ronaldo is the show. He's the entertainer. He's the main dude. And he delivers 36 goals last year when he's 36. I mean, Juventus certainly didn't deliver because uh, Inter Milan and Lukaku won the league title. But Ronaldo, man, you can't argue with the fact that he delivers. And you all know what to do at this point. Make sure you fire in your comments. Make sure you please fire in your super chats as well. And I'll ask you... And because so many of you are constantly commenting where you're watching from, if you really want to ask me a question, you've got to send it in with the Super Chat because otherwise I really won't see it. Like this one coming in here from Moscow. Not from Moscow. Watching from the Philippines. And Matthew, you're watching from Vermont in the US of A. Good morning to both of you as well. Now, with Ronaldo, I think I've already said this before. It's massively a heart and a head conversation you have to have with yourself because with Ronaldo... It's Ronaldo. Of course you want him back in a Manchester United show. He's, he's the greatest player that I've seen live in a Manchester United show. I love watching him. But my head tells me, mate, he's 36 years old. We should be surely spending our money elsewhere. That's that's what struggles with me. Comment here coming in from the real six foot five side. How are you doing, Simon? Out in Sussex saying United should get a central defensive midfielder and a centre back. I think maybe I'm going to have to do separate videos, maybe non-live videos on my 
I think have I already done it on centres back and centre defensive midfield targets? I don't know, but you already know that I really want Ruben Neves to be signed, but apparently that's not really going to happen. Don't really know why United really are just not going in for him at all. And I agree with you, sir. We do need a central defensive midfielder and a centre back, but maybe it doesn't mean that you can't have the idea of Ronaldo. Alan Freeman there on YouTube, you're saying Ronaldo, he's still the best striker in the world. You know, at, at 36, I think with Ronaldo, when it comes to players with 36, you're thinking, nah, man, no chance. He's gone. He's passed it. But this is, Ronaldo's a freak, man. Ronaldo's probably got the body of a 26-year-old. He's a supreme athlete. He Nobody has looked after themselves better than Cristiano Ronaldo does. And I think... For me, that's a reason why he's still probably going to be at the top of his game for another maybe a couple of years. Pushing, It wouldn't surprise me if Ronaldo's pushing 40 and he's still banging in 20-plus league goals wherever he's playing. At some point, I think he's going to go back to Sporting Lisbon, but maybe it's going to be a year at United first. I don't know. It's a confusing one. As I said, because it doesn't strike me as something that's really in United's long-term plan, and it would strike me more of as like a Woodward a few years ago signing rather than what are they going to sell show wants and needs. But maybe with someone like Ronaldo, you can't really ignore the fact that how much he would bring. Lucky you're over on Facebook. You're saying bring Ronaldo in already. He'll bring his trophy experience here and hopefully make us win trophies. I mean, if Ronaldo's not making you win trophies, why are you going to spend that much money on him? Right? Absolutely. Right. Let's skip on from the Ronaldo news because there's plenty to get through this morning. You know what to do. Keep firing your comments in here. We've got, Izioma watching from Senegal. Good morning to you, my friend. We've got Ebenezer watching from Nigeria. Good morning to you too. Ah, was it? Where was that comment there? Uh, as I said, there's so many comments coming in. I can really, I really struggle to keep up with them. Uh, Ricardo watching from Jamaica. Good morning to you as well, my friend. Uh, let's move on from Ronaldo and let's talk about Baran. And the latest reports coming from El Confidencial out in Spain. They are saying that he does not want to join Manchester United and wants to join PS PSG and make a return to France. Last-minute talks between club captain and Raul and fellow centre-back Sergio Ramos and President Florentino Perez about a new contract yesterday made the Frenchman's departure even more likely, offering United further hope. However, El Confidencial reports that Varane wants to move back and join PSG. What's your reaction to that? Do you think that Varane is the answer to our centre-back problems, or do you actually expect him to go back to PSG? Super chat coming in here from Danny Shields. Big up to you, Danny. Thank you for that. Ronaldo's mentality and attitude could benefit the team more than anything he does on the pitch. And skipping back to Ronaldo, I think that's a big, big point. And it's a big reason why I would say that uh, Edison Gavani was such a positive character and such a, not just with his goals at United this year, that, that the role model that he became for Mason Greenwood, I don't think that Mason Greenwood's resurgence in form was coincidental at all. I think it it went exactly in line with Cavani's form. And I think Cavani had that sort of impact and Ronaldo could have that sort of impact on this set of players at United because we've got quality there, but we don't have winners. And that, 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 is, that is something that you just can't underestimate how important that is. And clearly, that's something that United need to get. And if you're looking at winners, are you really going to get anybody better than Cristiano Ronaldo? I'm not sure. But let's get back to the Varane news, which we were just looking at there. And as I said, reports from Spain coming out that he wants to be moving back to France instead of Manchester United. What's your reaction to that? Let me read a few of these comments out. Numero uno, very clear on yours. You're saying forget Varane. Let's have a look what else you're all saying here. If we don't get, was that comment if coming from Daniel BW? If we don't get Verandas, Pau Torres, Scriniar, and lots of other centre backs out there. Scriniar, wow, you're making me remember Jose Mourinho and what was going on with him at that point. Remember when we were heavily linked with Scriniar and then we wouldn't pay the release clause to Inter Milan? And then a year later, he was worth less, but Mourinho got sacked. I think that was a summer where. We sort of undermined Mourinho, didn't we? We didn't give, we didn't back him with the targets that he wanted, and then the relationship between Woodward and Mourinho collapsed, and it was painful to watch. And that was the beginning of the end for Mourinho. But Screeny Eyes coming back in, maybe. Let's find out what's going on. But moving on from Varane, I think as the comments are saying there. I think with Varane, it could be Rafael Varane, it could be Paul Torres, it could be Jules Conde, it could be, hell, it could be Sergio Ramos, it could be anybody. 
There's not a centre back target, I don't think, at this particular moment in time, that we're really, really going in for. Look, with uh, Jaden Sancho, it's Jaden Sancho. You know we're in for Sancho, and that's our right wing target. I don't think we've got, to me anyway, looking at all the reports as I do every single day, I, it, it doesn't strike me that United have a pure centre back target, a number one centre back target that we're really going after. There's too many different stories every day coming about Varane or or Torres, or or anybody else, or Kunde. Let's see what happens. But at the moment, for me, there's not an obvious target that we're really going for at centre-back. And that's bad. There really, really should be, but I don't think there really is. Let's see where a few more of you watching this from. We've got Salifu watching from Ghana. Good morning to you, my friend. John Sisk watching from Tennessee. Good morning, John. I think the first lad from Tennessee. Uh, we've got Likat watching from Nigeria. Plenty of people watching from Nigeria. Good morning to all of you. Uh, right. Let's skip on to the next talking point. And we're going to skip on to Fabrizio Romano and what he has had to say about the latest on a few things. Tom Heaton, he will undergo his medical with Manchester United this week and he'll sign a contract until 2023. Uh, one more season option. A done deal completed. Here we go. Confirmed, he says. And the Ari, the Sancho negotiations, they are still ongoing. Now, that's the important one that we actually want an update on. We don't really care. No offence to Tom Heaton. But Tom Heaton is not the priority for Manchester United right now. It is certainly Jaden Sancho. Now, Tom Heaton coming in. Look, Joel Pereira's left. Sergio Romero's left. We needed another centre, another goalkeeper to come in. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's got his man. A player who played for United previously. He'll be announced in July. That's not exciting. It doesn't really change much. It just is what it is. And uh, as Aaron says there, I think that's probably fair. I think he will be a solid third goalkeeper. That's just, it is what it is. It's just a replacement in the squad. The more important thing there is the fact that Sancho talks are still ongoing. Now, there were some reports yesterday that there might be. I did, I did, my video yesterday was all about, was today Jaden Sancho day? Yesterday wasn't Jaden Sancho day, unfortunately. But it feels like we're in that situation now where it, it wouldn't be too much of a surprise if it came out at any point now in the next week that United have agreed a deal with Dortmund for Sancho. That's what we're waiting for. We've got the personal terms done. Sancho wants to join United. The agent fees are already sorted. That's not an issue. For me, it's about... Just getting that agreement. And I think we're about £11 million pounds different, a difference in the values between what Dortmund are asking for and what United are currently offering. That's not much. And once that is agreed, there's no reason why that deal can't be announced nice and quickly. But look, the negotiations are still ongoing. And that's really the latest on Sancho. Hopefully, I can come live later today with a, with a brilliant video about Jaden Sancho and about the fact that we've signed him. Maybe I won't, but let's see. And if, if it does... If there is an update, you know where to come first. And that is United People's TV. But for Richie Romano, now this one was interesting and a, a bit random, really. But he not only gave an update on Heaton and also Sancho, he was speaking about Donny van der Beek and the fact that there were no talks between Arsenal, Manchester United or any player agents for Donny van der Beek. Arsenal will sign a new midfielder for sure, but there's nothing going on for Van der Beek as of today. There are other names in the list of priorities. Now, you let me know in the comments below, what do you think... Um, what do you think about Donny van der Beek's future at Manchester United? Do you think he has a future at Manchester United? Do you think that he should be leaving Manchester United? Do you think he was the wrong sort of signing? You let me know what you think. Quickly before I run into that, I'm going to see where you're all watching this from because I like this. Tommy's watching from Oslo in Norway. Good morning to you, Tommy. You've got Uday watching from Durban in South Africa. Good morning to you as well. We've got Gerard watching from Anglesey, North Wales. How are you doing there, my friend? And we've got Abdi watching from Kenya. Lots of you all around the world. But Donny van der Beek, when we signed him, for me, I'm still semi-convinced that Donny van der Beek was a club signing rather than a manager signing. And by that, I mean it was a player who United realised was way undervalued compared to what he should be worth, given the year that Ajax had. And therefore, we took it as an opportunity to sign him and probably make a profit on him, rather than a player who 
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer desperately wanted to sign because you can't argue with the the, the almost neglect, I suppose, the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had towards Donny van der Beek. He hardly used him at all. He ran Bruno into the ground instead of using Donny van der Beek. And when it comes to competing in multiple competitions, you have to rotate your squad. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he certainly didn't do that enough last season. And he, he could have done. He had Donny van der Beek, but he chose not to use him. And that's harder because he didn't, he wanted to, he signed him and then he wasn't impressed enough by Donny van der Beek or the fact that maybe Donny van der Beek was never a player that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer really had in his plans, but he was a player that was put on his plate by the club. It's an interesting one. Look, we've got Junior here saying, I think Donny will play next season. Um, you've got Lehal, you're saying, they got Darren there, sorry, saying, I'll give Van der Beek another season. Players new to the Premier League often need a year to adapt, but he must get game time. Now, you're absolutely spot on there, Darren. Players do take time to adapt, but he has to get game time. There's no point saying that he hasn't adapted when you're just not playing him. And if you're not playing him, you can't see how good or how bad he is. And I think that's the issue with Donny van der Beek. We just haven't seen enough of him so far to really have a fair comment on whether he, whether or not he's going to be adapted to Premier League life or whether or not he's not. Solskjaer hasn't given him enough opportunity to really show that. And the issue that when he does come in, you're then under such intense pressure to really perform that he's hyper-scrutinised. It's a weird situation with Donny van der Beek, but apparently there's no talks at Arsenal, and I don't think we'd sell someone like van der Beek to Arsenal anyway. Now, make sure you subscribe down below if you're new to United People's TV and you're enjoying this live stream. I do it every Monday to Friday. In the mornings, running through the latest transfer news. So subscribe down below. It's free. And make sure you hit the notifications both on Facebook and drop a like on Facebook. Just do what you can to help spread the word and engage. And make sure you send your super chats in as well. There's so many of you commenting all where you're watching it from that I can hardly read your questions. So if you want to have your questions answer, answered, sorry, send them in. But let's move on from Fabrizio Romano. And let's skip to Euro 2020 yesterday. And I did a tweet uh, before the Scotland game. I said, I can't wait to see Scott McTominay drop a 10 out of 10 performance. And that didn't happen. But somebody who did get plaudits was Victor Lindelof. Nil-nil last night between Sweden and Spain. And Spain had plenty of shots, plenty of opportunities. But Sweden kept a clean sheet. And Victor Lindelof, I mean, not everyone agreed with the fact that Victor Lindelof got named man of the match. But Victor Lindelof got named man of the match. Now, do you think with Lindelof, do you think he's unfairly treated? Do you think he's given way too much criticism at Manchester United? Do you think it's fair how much criticism he gets? Could he really still be the partner for Harry Maguire at Manchester United? I personally don't think so. I personally think that with Victor Lindelof, they're just too similar in their faults. Harry Maguire and... Victor Lindelof. And because of that, it exacerbates the, the faults and flaws of each other. Lindelof makes Maguire's flaws look worse and Maguire's flaws make Lindelof look worse. What you need in any section of the field, whether it's midfield, centre-back, up front, you need two players who are going to complement each other. And I just don't think it's like having salt and salt in your dinner. We need salt and pepper. And at the moment, they're just too similar, Maguire and Lindelof. And I think I think Lindelof's basically the understudy to Maguire at Manchester United, and we need two centre-backs alongside them, which are completely different. I just don't think they work well together, and that's my own opinion. Let's see what you're saying in the comments. We've got Gershwin watching from Perth in Australia. Good morning to you. We've got Wakisa watching from Malawi over on Facebook. Good morning to you as well. Cruz, I don't think you like Lindelof. Lindelof is trash, he says. Uh, Prochetto saying Lindelof is good when he has a strong physical partner alongside him like Koulibaly or Varane. Lindelof is too similar to Maguire. I think we all, I think we all, we all know it now, don't we? It, it, it's not rocket science to see the fact that Lindelof and Maguire are just too similar when they play alongside each other. And it's a problem for Manchester United. I don't think we'll go away until we get a new centre back in. But fair play to Lindelof. He got Man of the match there, although I don't really think he should have, but he still did. Now, Scott McTominay and Scotland. Wow, that didn't really work out for them, did it? 2-0, Patrick Schick with not only one goal, but probably goal of the tournament, scoring from the halfway line with David Marshall 30 yards off his line. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, Scott McTominay was pretty ineffective, but hold of Scotland was pretty ineffective, I would argue. I think Scott McTominay was, the game passed him by a lot. 
because the game was played sort of elsewhere. I don't really think he kind of got the most out of McTominay. And he played in, what was it, like a 3-5-2 in the middle of the midfield. Not really sure it's even his best position. But McTominay didn't play well and Scotland didn't play well. But Lindelof, Lindelof he certainly did. Moving on to the next point. Now, I'm actually going to do a separate video on this, but I just want to touch on it. You know me and you know the Glazers and you know what I think about the Glazers. And I always do in-depth proper videos on them. And I'm going to do an in-depth proper video on all the notes from the fans forum because Joel Glazer was there. But this is what Joel Glazer had to say on a top level. He's basically saying, look, Gary has been hard on us. Everybody has their views, two ways to look at it. Blah, blah, blah. You can pause, you can listen. People always have good points. He's effectively saying, look, Gary has good ideas, good thoughts, and they're heard. So Joel Glazer trying to tell United fans that, look, man, we're listening to you now. We're not just ignoring you. I mean, they've ignored us the whole time, haven't they? And they continue to ignore us. But it's interesting to see this, and it's interesting to actually have Joel Glazer speaking. It's, it's weird. I mean, it should have been like this from the very, very start, but it hasn't been. I'm interested to see whether or not change actually happens. A change that we all want to happen is the Glazers leaving. But I think what we can really understand now, the Glazers aren't going anywhere. Um, they're not going to be forced out. A bit like um, Stan Kroenker at Arsenal is not going to be forced out by uh, the Spotify owner trying to buy them. They're just not going to be forced anywhere. If they want to sell, they'll sell on their own terms. So hopefully we can therefore get a, a different dialogue and a different relationship with the owners and they, and they can be more involved. And in I don't know. I want them gone, but I've realised now they're not going to be leaving. Frustrating as it is. Super comment here coming in from Dark Prince. Thank you very much, buddy. Saying Lindelof is just not it. Don't let that game trick you. He was playing against Morata, who can't kick or head a ball. Obviously, that is Lindelof's biggest weakness, is his aerial ability or lack thereof. That always gets exposed. And that's probably one of Maguire's greatest strengths. Uh, but I don't know. We need a new centre-back. It's as simple as that. Chris Stringer here with a comment about the Glazers. Do you not just want the debt paid off? Of course I want the debt paid off. And they were asked specifically about that in the fans' forum. But as I said, I'm going to go into more detail because it's, it's right. I'd rather do that in a non-live video so I can actually explain things properly to you. Sort of a bit of research behind the videos. I'll see. Lewis here saying, maybe Joel finally wants to finally build a dialogue with the fans. That's the least he or they can do. And that is what they're trying to do here. It's it's basically they've they tried the Super League. It hasn't worked. They realised that they've damaged the fans' relationship with the club beyond repair. And now they're trying to sort of rein it back in. For me, it's too little too late. But it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. As I said, the Glazers, I think it's fair to say at this point, it's obvious that they're not going to leave the club until they want to sell the club. It, they won't be forced out. Nothing will happen. We can keep doing what we're doing, but it is what it is. Now, a lot of you asking me whether I've talked about Ronaldo. I have talked about Ronaldo, but I'll quickly go back to it just so you can understand the news if you've missed it. I'll give a quick roundup because not everyone has been here from the very, very start. Reports from Italy saying that we've offered a two-year contract to Ronaldo worth 330 grand a week. He's currently on just over 500,000 pounds a week. And we all had a bit of a debate. We all got our comments in about Ronaldo about whether or not we should go back in for him. And the general consensus is we probably shouldn't go back in for Ronaldo, but we'd all love to see him back at the club. Uh, I, and these, these are the annual Ronaldo to United transfer rooms. They happen every single year. They've happened every single year since he's left for Real Madrid, since he's joined Juventus. And it's happened again this year. And it's more interesting for the fact that he's only got one year left on his contract and the fact that he's 36. He's coming towards the end of his career. Juventus lost the league miserably last year, didn't get the Champions League. That's what he went there for. Could he come back to United? I don't know, but that is the story. See where all of you are watching this from. We've got Prince watching from Morocco. Good morning to you, my friend. Uh, where else? Up here. Uh, but, but we've got Seko watching from Nigeria. Hitsman Don watching from Maryland out in America. And I hope this is true, but I don't think it's true. I'm going to do it anyway. I hope the North Pole is lovely and warm for you, Andy. Good signal there. That's quite impressive. And we've got uh, I, Darth Moore watching from Stavanger in Norway. Good morning to you. And Shane Perry watching from Australia. And Chris watching from the beautiful place that is Hull. As always, make sure you get your super chats in if you really want to ask me a question. But let's fire into the last point that I want to talk about today. 
And this is just a nice little one from Cavani. You don't need the sound on this one, so don't worry about it. You just have to read the captions. But it's Cavani saying, after finishing well with United, I've decided to stay here for one more year and compete there. That's what he said. And I'm happy he's staying, if I'm being honest. I think they're a good team, and that's why I was motivated to stay. I'm really happy that Cavani stayed. I think him coming for one more year is the perfect situation because I want United to go in hard and big for Erling Haaland next year. When that release clause comes in, everybody's going to be after him. But United, we've got the Solskjaer link. We really, really need to use that because we, we have an advantage in that respect. He was a guy who brought him in at Mulder, a guy who brought him through at Mulder before he left and joined Salzburg. And obviously his career really started from then. But Solskjaer, man, you've got to ring him up and crack some Norwegian jokes. Go over there and visit his family. Bring some Norwegian food to him. I don't know. I don't care what you do. Tap him up. But Cavani staying for one more year, I think, gives us the opportunity to really focus on Haaland next year. Otherwise, because if Cavani left this summer, you know we'd be in for a striker somewhere. And we probably signed someone that didn't really make sense for a little bit too much money that might work out like Cavani or might not work out like Falcao. And I'm glad we don't we can avoid that circus this summer and we can focus on different circuses like Jaden Sancho. Because imagine trying to in a summer where we need to sign a centre defensive midfielder and a centre back as our priorities. Imagine trying to do those two and signing Sancho and signing a striker. It's just not gonna happen. I mean, I still at this point worry that we're not gonna sign a um central defensive midfielder, even though it's such a crucial priority position. But I just don't know. But let me see where all, you're all watching it from in the comments. And if you've got any questions, fire them in now. At the end of every video, for a couple of minutes, I'll just read through your comments and your super chats. So if there's anything you really want to ask me, make sure you send it in now. Cavani is awesome, says Jack. He deserves to win trophies with United. He deserves as well to hear his chant being pumped out by 70,000 fans inside Old Trafford. That's something I'm really, really looking forward to seeing. You've got Robbie watching from Kenya and you've got Salku watching from Gambia. Good morning to both of you. And Joe, you're watching from Cape Town over on Facebook. Uh, Projecto saying, Harlan's agent is Raiola. Even though I'd love to see him as our player, but Raiola might be a big problem. Raiola's going to be a big problem everywhere. And that's something we obviously all have to understand is the fact that Harlan's probably going to leave in maybe three years. Whatever club he joins, he's not going to be there for longer than three years. He's going to go through his progression as in a career, and he'll probably end up at Real Madrid. Probably strikes me more as a Real Madrid striker, but Real Madrid is certainly not in the position right now to actually sign him because they cannot afford to pay anything. They're just signing players on free this summer. Um, Man United, this is Lino saying, Man United should sell off Martial, De Gea and Donny, bring in Ronaldo and Sancho. Send in Donny van der Beek. Be a bit harsh. But he's hardly played a game this season. It's up to Onigana Solskjaer whether he really wants to include him as part of his squad or just leave him on the periphery like he did last year. Victor him saying, never see United. Make it happen, please. He's a great player. You know what I said. And I have seen people and I have seen reports saying that we're at least looking at Ruben Neves. But we should be further than at least looking for Ruben Neves. He's only 35 million. We should be going there with all saying, here's my 35. Take it. I want Ruben Neves. But I don't know. United really are not doing it at the moment. But that's it for today's live stream. Please, if you are new to the channel and you're still here, I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope it was interactive and you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to United People's TV if you're new and you're watching on YouTube. And if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you drop a like on the video. Make sure you hit the notifications on because I'll be here tomorrow and I want you to join in as well. And hopefully there'll be some big updates. And when they are coming, when we do sign Sancho, you can make sure that you come back here because I will be here bringing you all the latest news. But thank you very much for joining in this morning. Enjoy it. Who is playing in Euro 2020 today? I don't even know. Oh, actually, France against Germany. Oh, yes. Looking forward to that one. We get to see Jules Conde in action. We get to see Paul Popper in action. Hell, and maybe Raphael Varane. We'll all watch that. So make sure you join me tomorrow. Until then.